tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. Yes. Are you, what, what coffee are you drinking this morning? Is that bes- is that bespoke? It's not. It's not. It's whole food. Oh, whole, whole food. It's a whole food. They, they when just we get a, a new... whole food sponsor, yikes! My life will be complete. What's up? Is Ooh. that possible? No. We might have a sponsor soon that's actually in Whole Foods. Maybe. Yes. That's the closest we can get, but yeah. <laughs> Bezos doesn't really like us very much. No, they don't do. Look, those <laughs> those gigantic companies like that don't do podcasts. Um, but they will in the future. But uh, we Peloton were, did it for a little bit. Did they really? Mm-hmm. You know, they, their and stock they just came out. Bikes. Their stock just came out and it tanked really bad. Maybe because they're giving away bikes to everyone they advertise with. Oof. Look, man, uh, that the the Peloton. That's, that's a I think much Nordic fun. Track probably put them out of business. Cheaper, mo- same thing. No, cheaper. they're look, they're they're doing well. IPOs aren't doing well this year, so. Oh, okay, but I, they as a company, they're doing well. I think so. It's one of those things where you know, any of this workout shit gets hot for a few years, and then there's something else. Right. You know, when we were kids, what was it? Thigh Masters. Billy, hey, parent. Billy's backyard. Bash, yeah, Billy ba- Blanks. Yeah. Billy Billy's backyard <laughs> boot boobalicious something. Boot camp or boot whatever camp. it was. Yeah. Um it goes in trends and it goes it <laughs> all the time. And yeah, man. Uh look, every three to five years there's something that pops up and you're like, Yeah. We got Chuck Norris on a fucking thing. Uh, oh, the Bowflex? Bowflex. Was he Bowflex or it was this weird Not sure what he was. Okay, I'll look it up, but Total Gym. The total gym. Total gym, total gym yes. for uh yeah. For Chuck Norris. Um, yeah, Chuck Norris, Christy Brinkley. And look, they're still alive and looking great. Wanna so. rock your butt. And then uh, Bo Flex is, wanna rock now, wanna rock our body. We use one you in, wanna uh, rock that body. in Pool Boy. A Bo Flex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The entire end credits just is like... just Sorbo working out on a Bo Flex for three minutes. Kevin Sorbo. Oh, that's right. It's so funny. And I was like, and, it's a, and there's no cut. So you're kind of like, oh, geez. Like, is he really? He did it. He, just, he, re- he really did that. That whole thing for, uh, what was it, three and a half minutes straight or whatever it was. Like, it's really, really funny. And uh, I was like, man, do we have to clear this with Bowflex? And they were like, man, I don't think they're around anymore. I think we're all good. Um, but either way, everybody had that thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Peloton, there'll be something else. There'll be a, a hologram in your living room soon that you'll be able to work out with your own personal trainer. I they think have that. One, right? mm-hmm, the mirror. The mirror, yeah. Yep. You can work out in the mirror. I'm talking a full hologram inside your oh, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Living room. Yep. It's just, I would like a hologram of an instructor bike and then holograms of all the other people that are in it so you feel like you're in the class. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't have to talk to anybody ever again. And then I don't have to see or talk to any real people ever again. You went hard today at the gym. I mean, look, what? I, I, I am always shocked by your endurance. You're one of those. <laughs> we've said this on the show before. I'll say it again. You're one of those people who can just wake up and run 10 miles and hat like you haven't done it in months or whatever. I know. This morning you rocked a, what were you, 14 on a, a 14 and a 14 incline. For 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Oof. At a three, between three and three, five. Hearing that. Makes you. Throw up. Like I'm this close to vomiting all over the table. You can do that. You can pick it up. But you did get into the studio today. You're like, is it hot in here? It's hot in here. Well, well, that's what I do. And like, and also when I'm there, I'm drenched, disgusting looking. That's why I always say like, I'm not one of those people that's like, just put the hair in a pony and like. The yeah. makeup will still stay. I'm a drown rat by the time I leave. No matter what, I don't think there's any point in going if you're not. In my mind, Correct. I'm like, I only have, with two kids, you only have a certain amount of time. So in my mind, I feel like I need to get in a week's worth of workout yeah. right now. And that's bad, right? But whatever. Find a routine at some point. Yeah, you rocked it, James. I think I can do it. Maybe I'm just trying to prove to myself, too, like. 
does she still does she still got it? You'll know tomorrow morning. I can promise you that. Well, I've already been doing it three days in a row. Oh, have you really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Then you're fine. Yeah. So the other day I did weights, uh, upper body, and that. Look at that. In the 40 minute. Look at you, Jabes. Man. Yeah. Uh, I envy you. Well, we have like, anytime we go to New York, I want to like, for some reason, New York, I want to look good in New York. And eat. I don't know why. Yeah, you want to eat. you want to eat as well. But you want, everyone there looks so good. I know. It's worse than L.A. They all just like look so good. They walk everywhere. They're in shape. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, look, it, it, it's great. I'm always amped to go back to New York. Uh, the book, thank, thank you to everybody who's Paul. Thank you for my service. Five weeks straight, New York Times bestseller list. Uh, they've added dates, by the way, uh, for the book tour, which is always, you know, an unbelievably positive sign. So Nashville is on there, and then uh, Fort Campbell in Kentucky. Okay. One's October 5th, one's October 7th, and you can check uh, mine or Matt's Instagrams uh, for that. But uh, that's amazing. Then we get a bunch of huge meetings in New York uh, with all of our, all our sponsors. It's podcast upfronts. And that's what I'm excited about. The Yankees could be and there. That's what I'm also excited about. Post Malone is there. That's what I'm also excited about. Yeah. Uh, we have a ton of big interviews on tap there. So I understand why you're like, hey, I need to, I need to go for Kick it. Kick it into gear, and especially after the cruise, guys. Yeah. And everyone who went on the cruise knows. We were just eating. I know. And Ryan I, I was talking for a week my, straight. I know. I talked to my doctor this morning, and he goes, uh, man, it's a miracle that you're in somewhat sh- great shape considering that. everything you do on a daily basis around the country. And I'm like, yeah, man, I can't believe it either. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's the God's honest truth. Yeah. I was just like, how do you explain this schedule to, to people? Oh yeah. Cause he was like, I, look, I follow you on Instagram just because I want to see where you go and then see how tired you are when you show up the next yeah. time or whatever it is. And I'm like, eh, we, we keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. And then you yeah. have time to go to a school board meeting. No, which was well. last night. I'm a, we'll give everybody a, an update on that. We get a ton of messages on that. Uh, those Look, we've been doing interviews on it, uh, and they crushed. Uh, last night was the school board meeting. Is it a meeting or a hearing? Meeting. Meeting. Okay. Thankfully, hearing, hearing sounds more or else you professional. Would have sh- you would have shown up with Creechmeyer and... Uh, Creechmeyer and McGillicuddy, yeah. attorney's law. Whatever. Attorney's law. Um, but I, so surprisingly last night, uh, look, went hard on, uh, David Wartman, who was the head of the redistricting, uh, committee and, uh, surprisingly it went great. Uh, look, he came, uh, came up to me afterwards, chatted with me, said we, you know, talked I'm about impressed by that. same here. We, we had the same, uh, concerns, um, apparently. And I'm, I'm figured cautiously out, os- optimistic about it. Figured out that you want the same things. You're fighting for the same so. things. I, I think so. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, good dude. He's a good dude. I, I'd, nice. I'd have a beer with him for sure. And uh, Would it, he it have was, one with you? Uh, sure. I don't know. I don't Maybe know. Maybe not. But you can, uh, you can have a beer with him. Maybe not. It, it, look, <laughs> it's tough when you're not in the entertainment industry and then all of a sudden, you, dude, you look at a podcast and you still kind of think like uh, what the fuck's a podcast it's a gonna podcast go? who cares it's one this one's 1. 1.8 million listeners drinking bros is 6.1 million listeners you, you combine those you're looking at 8 million people yeah. um th- there's a reason why you know drinking bros is number 20 in the world and it's like that's a lot of fucking people and i think you know normal people who aren't used to that kind of heat on a day in and day out basis when it happens and somebody comes after you like that it's tough, man. Um, we've been doing it for 20 years. Movies and you know, 30 movies and all that shit. The movie... We didn't want anyone to go after him. No. We I were just, just saying... Just want a conversation and, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. to fight for our children, obviously. And uh, Now, Copper, whatever. Matthew Cropper. <laughs> Matthew you know, He Cropper. felt the brunt, brunt of that 6.1 million. We said million. go ahead and go after him, but... Yeah. We, look, we people sent the, on the board, they live in our community. We're not saying go, go after them. But these are the people we need to talk to. Yes. And finally, last night, we had got a, to talk. Yeah, we got to. We finally got to talk because, again, you, you guys have been sending in emails, surveys, no responses. We signed petitions. You name it. Um, everything you see on like Andy Griffith, we did. Uh, no, no responses. Uh, yeah. And then, look, you go on a podcast of this size. 
You want to show on this size? You're going to get some responses. Yeah. And uh, Wartman, he's got a lot of balls, man. He came up to me, and it was great. I respect Most, that. 99% of people hate confrontation or hate talking to people. And you know, Oh, th- anyone else would have just been like, pss, 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 whisper behind your back yeah. and then run to their car. Good dude. Good nice. dude. Uh, like yeah. It. Will like he have it. a beer with me? Don't know. Don't know. I'd have a beer with him, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I like it. I like it. So, again, cautiously optimistic. We'll see sure. what happens. And then, um, you know, it's like we always talk about on the show and then drinking bros and everything, everything else. Uh, if it doesn't swing my way, obviously, I'll run. And it, we encourage people to do that on both of these shows where it's like, hey, right. get involved in your community. Right. Try to do things. Uh, I coach all my kids' teams, um, you know, soccer. Uh, Little League, all that stuff. Everybody who listens to the show already knows that. Uh, get involved with your community. Go out and hang out with your neighbors. We do that all the time. Uh, love that na- lo- love our neighborhood. Yeah. Love our neighbors. And I, I don't know. There's a weekend where we're not all hanging out, having oh, some form of barbecue or drinks in that neighborhood. Got, another, or... got a chili cook-off. Not cook-off, but a chili. I think it might be 90 degrees. But anyway, we're trying to will fall. Yeah. We're trying to will it into existence. And so we're having like... Chili mac and cheese, <laughs> and it's like gonna be fucking hot as shit. Is it gonna but be ninety this weekend? It will a heat wave. Get uh, the heat wave. Th- no, is it really? No, uh, I think it'll be high eighties. High eighties. A high eighties, but only because it's raining like crazy the night before. All right. So Friday, it's that's the only thing that's cooling it down. But before that, like today, is supposed to be a record high. Is it really? Mm-hmm. There was like heat wave advisory through North Carolina, the east. Okay. So cool. Well, look, David, you want to come in the chili kickoff? You're allowed to come. Come on, uh, come on over. <laughs> come on over. <laughs> uh, look, I, again, love the community, love the neighborhood. I, I think the reason why I am so passionate, in particular, we is don't want to. Yeah, we've, we've uh, us personally, we've gone all in on the city of Wilmington. Moved an entire operation from Los Angeles here. Yeah. Moved family here. And particularly to, and once we got yes. here, worked our way into this particular neighborhood that had been in this school district. Since its inception, since, yeah. <laughs> since it was the built. The neighborhood was built 18 years ago. Was and was told that it'll just move north because that's what makes sense. But politically, it doesn't. And we're in this, you know, it's classic tale of there's Democrats and Repu- Republicans on this board. And Democrats are for you know, changing it up and, you know, everyone to go to different schools and Republicans are for neighborhood schools, which means like everything that's close. around you, yeah, keep it close. you go to. So it that they're fighting within their own board the same way that the nation is and everyone, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, to where it's like one person, Democrats versus Republicans on this board and they're, you know, I just don't know how much they're actually fighting with the, we, with each other about it or if they're just like, this is the way it's going to go. Like, We'll find out. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. But, but uh, that's what again. they're up against as well. It's not like they're just like deciding. It's like they're both, you know, Wartman and I think there's one or two other Republicans and then the majority is Democrats and they're, you know, whatever. Ah, I'm sure they were sick that I was on Alex Jones last week on InfoWars. Uh, <laughs> either way the reason why we're so passionate about it we've we moved you know from la to here yeah. uh family has moved here to retire now uh, yeah extended family like yeah and then so. we just we we have we just built this four thousand square foot studio jamie our producer almost died twice during it and and he probably will again <laughs> <laughs> he might. Well, with he's random saying, other. Saying, oh no, oh, I'm, no, I'm all done with, with that. With random other things, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and then we we try to promote the local businesses and everything here. That's why I was asking with, with Bespoke. Shut oh yeah, up, Jabe's. Look, know? Bespoke is amazing. Just open right behind us, yeah. Yeah, coffee probably place. the best coffee you can get. You know, they're very um. Coffee forward though, right? So you oh, no yeah. cream, no no cream, yeah, no sugar. You know yep. what I mean? Like no lattes, no syrups. And it's I hadn't very, had that like, until we were in batch. San Antonio. What was it last month? Or yeah, um, and I was like, wait, what? And but the, it was the, the woman was like, hey, I can I can give you some creamers if you want to take with you. Like right. really whispered it to me, and I was right. like, oh, all right, cool. Um, Dan is correct though. There is a difference in coffees and tastes and all that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Uh, and they have, sm- yeah, so they make their own. 
and it's small batch and it's I mean it's awesome obviously it's awesome right yeah it's just what you have time for what you're feeling what me I'm look I you know this I inject it I get out of there I'm, sure. I will never be a coffee connoisseur or lover I look I love, love black rifle coffee obviously this is on the desk um that's good black rifle is good enough for me I don't need to experiment well, it's really good I know but Dan brought in yesterday um a hundred and fifty dollars a pound Colombian. he brought it in he brought it in what did he do did he you make were it not here he made it yeah he made it and it I was with my dumb, Jamie was, was it a with slow my pour dumb was he kids slow pouring it he grounded and everything no shit with like an electrical one or a oh uh, yeah yeah so he did the whole thing like the nice wow. the one day he knew I wasn't gonna be here oh or? wait hang on though uh because as as crabby as Dan is he actually ordered you two bottles of wine from a uh, wine of the month club. So you're going to be happy about that. Aww. Yeah. Gets in today. And I think one of the bottles is on the counter, by the way. So Dan's nice. <laughs> I just always feel like it's 50 first dates with him. Well, look, when you've killed, I have to re-meet him every day. When you've killed hundreds <laughs> of people. <laughs> yes. Uh, overseas, and then you come back here to this normal existence. Yeah, and you're just fucking grinding coffee and buying wine. It's yeah. got to be rough. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> so we've been in our fair but share. But I meet, I meet him every day. I uh, know. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. What are we? What are, what we are, doing are we here? today? Yeah. What's happening? We, we, we've gotten our fair share of lawsuits over the years. There was one in particular that pissed him off, and he goes, I wish I just would have known that day one. I just would have picked him off, you know? And Fair. part of me don't know if he was oh, joking Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was not joking. <laughs> and that's what but you have to pretend that you don't know that. You can't even really say it out loud that you, uh, that you know that. But, yeah, no, he, he was joking. He's sure. hilarious. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Who knows? Dan's one of those people where I feel like it's uh, goodwill hunting with him. I go, man, every time I pull up to your house in the morning, like, yep. I'm, a, it, I'm afraid I mean. that you're going to be gone. It's and it's, Something like that. That's it. Yeah. And it's not going to be a smile like Ben Affleck where you're like, ah. Oh, no. You're going to you're gonna look in and it's going to be a bloodbath It's going to be a crime scene for him. A crime scene. Yeah. Because he's not just taking himself out. I think he would. It's just himself. Just himself? Yeah. He's not like that. He's not like that. I, it'll just be himself. But it'll be in an extravagant way, I feel like. Right. The Today Show one was really funny that he wanted to do. How about the window? He, he would probably like the window that you look in that he knew you would look in. His dick would it, just be yeah. like hanging on a string. It would there. be very smart and sophisticated, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there would be a joke at the end of it where you're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, you got me." Yeah, <sighs> son of like, a like bitch. on the Today Show. We t <laughs> there was a story told on Drinking Bros where he just wanted to go up to the window. Oh and wave, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then only suicide that is bomb the himself. Funniest thing I've heard. Where yeah. it's just like you, you know, he's like, "Look, if you wire it properly, it's only going to be you." You know, <sighs> um, and it, inside the pocket. Of, of his jacket. It just says tomorrow. You're going to be thinking about me tomorrow, even on today. Really funny. Really funny. Super Smart. dark. Really Real funny. Real dark. Yeah. It's one of the smartest guys. In Wouldn't the, be funny at the time. In the biz. <laughs> Wouldn't be funny at the time for anyone and probably for many years after. But I think there would be a point mm -hmm. a couple decades down the road where you'd be like, fucking son of a bitch. I asked him, I was like, what, what, what will be the tipping point for you? And, uh, you know, if he got some disease or something like that, he's like, I'm out. For sure. And I'm like, all right. Uh, and I, probably for him, it, it wouldn't even be that bad. Like maybe his heart because he eats so much meat. If he couldn't eat meat on a daily basis. He eats so much meat. So much. I've never seen a human eat that much meat. And it's like 6,500 calories or whatever he's eating a day. It's crazy. But I'm like, I'm surprised you don't have a heart attack. But he's jacked. Like I, I don't. I, yeah. It never works out. I don't understand it. Um, speaking of heart attacks, though, this is weird breaking news, actually. Uh, Bernie Sanders is out. Um, what? Yes. Uh, I'm going to read this here. This just popped up. Um, just had an emergency heart procedure uh, for a blocked artery. He's canceling all events and appearances until further notice. Oh. Um, he experienced chest discomfort Ouch. at an event last night. Sought medical evaluation, and uh, he had to have two stints put into place, and he's conversing in, in, in good spirits. He's 78 years old. Jesus Christ. I, I forget that he's 78. Man. I uh, look, don't, but... Mick Jagger just had this surgery, so um, he had a stint put in. 
So it, he may not be out. Out. Be no, out? but you were out for. I think it's. I think Mick was out for six to eight weeks. Oh, okay. Mick Jagger was out for six to eight weeks, and I don't. I don't know. It, like he'll probably miss a debate. I would want. I would think. And uh, all these appearances. Is there another debate in two months. Oh yeah, there's, oh. There's, a, there's a debate this month. Oh okay. Um, so, shit, man. Uh, if he misses that, and then he misses the rest of these rallies, that might knock him out. Yeah, I mean, but he was—he's not a front I think runner he was, anyways. I think he? he was top three. Okay. I, you know, you, you got Elizabeth Warren, Biden, and Bernie. Uh, to me, that was the top three. Yeah, that's true. So that would have gone for a while had that continued. Um, so now it's had just he been able to Warren, Warren v. Biden? Maybe. We'll see what happens with this. Because, again, this I'm is here a, for that show. This is definitely six weeks. Like, Mick came back, but it was a six-week thing. I like, like that it's so cut and dry. The two frontrunners oh, could yeah. not be any more any, polar opposite. Yeah. Um, man, that is a sh- that is really that's shocking news. That that stuff doesn't really happen that much. What this- that a candidate goes down for you know, yeah. a medical emergency like that because uh, he was at an event last night. You know Trump's going to use that. I'm sure. Over I'm sure. Look it, over. again. He this can't is handle news, it. So like uh, he I'm, can't handle I'm it. He sure can't he'll handle be on Twitter. Eight in, years. Yeah. In uh, in about four minutes. Sure. Giving some kind of condolence, but then just a little yep. knife. Just been like, well, you know. Just a little knife, right? In the yeah, hope you're feeling younger after this. Mm-hmm. Something like that. You know he'll go Oh, there. yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we know. Yeah. You know he'll go there. Um, so I was talking about this earlier, I think. Like, uh, got back last night after the, the meeting. And I uh, was writing last night. Maybe we were talking about before we went on. Because uh, you went to sleep pretty early. Um, yeah, I have to. I was up like four times last night. Yeah, it's the the child still the f- the fourteen month old is still. Well, he's teething now, which is again, or he's getting a molar, which he... anyone with kids knows. That's yeah, horrible. It's not sweet. It's um, not sweet, and he wasn't sweet before. So I was up late writing, and then I had a f- I had a fucking conference call again. This is why all this school board shit is important. Like, I don't want to add any more time to my day because I just don't have any. I don't have yeah. any time. I don't have any time. I took a conference call at eleven thirty last night. Uh, with L.A. for uh, a new movie. and Oh, L.A. just called you? Lo- yeah, just the city of Los Angeles. Wow. The city of Los Angeles called. Hello? Said, Hello? L.A.? Hello? This is Ross. No, a uh, pr- producer, obviously, in L.A. had called with uh, the script, and we were gone for a very long time. And through social media, you're able to see, like, where we are right. all the time. And he was trying to guess of, like, hey, man, did you get that script or do we, you know? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. We'd been on the cruise. Yeah. And then we'd flown back for the Alex Jones thing. And now the book tour is ex- expanding. We have all these interviews in New York and all this stuff. And I'm like, shit. So I opened the script and I read it. And it was Woody Hayes. It was the, it was the coach of, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about that, but fuck it. It's done now. Uh, it was Woody Hayes. It was the coach of Ohio State. It was a biopic on Woody Hayes. And oh, I was okay. Like, so I, I hit him back and I was like, hey, man. You would have told me it was Woody Hayes. I would have made you send it to my hotel wherever I was at for that weekend, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. Um, and he was like, ah, I know you were busy with the book tour and, and all these interviews across the, the nation and all that stuff. Like, I didn't want to bother you. And I was like, it is definitely not a bother. And I read the script. It was fantastic. And then I had a, a, a nice long conversation with him last night for about an hour. My, my voice is kind of rough today. Mm-hmm. But this script was lights out and... There was a couple notes that I had that kind of surprised me that I was like, shit, man. As soon as I said them, I was like, I, you know what's, what's odd is I, I probably wouldn't have given you these notes four or five years ago. And uh, just because of the climate and the way everything mm. is and how sensitive everybody is about shit. And, um, were you just giving him notes? Hollywood. Yes. And then we were trying to game plan how to get this made and then to who who it would go out right, to. Right, right, right. Um, because it's such a big story that you get one shot at something like this, and if you fuck it up, you know, it's your school, it's your university, mm. it's, it's everybody. So, like, it's a big one where you, you have to get it right. And some of my notes were like, hey, man, there were some darker 
things going on in Woody's life that he did and went through. Mm-hmm. I go, they weren't in this, they weren't in the scripts. And I was like, I had minor notes, minor tweaks and things like that. Um, cause it was a really good script. And he goes, you know, I wanted to show the positive aspect. I wasn't sure how the university would react or how studios would react about the darker stuff or whatever. And I was yeah. like, man, we did not have these conversations at all four or five years ago. And you know, is he alive? Sorry. No, no. Okay. He's, he's been gone for a very long time. What does his family think? I mean, you have to worry about He doesn't about have that much family okay. left. Um, okay. It's based on a book. Okay. So they adapted a, a mm. book. Um, and so is there darker stuff in the book? Yes. Oh. And I, well, there I, you go. And I know his story, and I mm-hmm. went over it. But you know, when I said to him, I was like, man, I don't know if a studio would take this if it was darker. And again, when I was saying I felt bad... I felt bad even for saying that because you're just trying to tell somebody's life the most interesting way you can. Now you're worried about all this other shit Mm. that you're like, will this get made? How can this get made? Um, Sports movies in particular. I started going back. Look, Queen. (laughs) I know. Fucking, they couldn't put one, like, kissing scene. Nothing. It was a PG-13 movie. Between Freddie and his many... So Boyfriends? I'm glad you brought that up. We had this conversation last night about the Queen movie where. B- Bohemian you, Rhapsody. But yes, yeah. you, you have a, some edgier content. But if you look at it, the numbers it made in the box office and especially worldwide, a studio is going to come back to you and say, hey, man, this formula worked. We made a gajillion dollars off of it. I don't want to do something darker. Yeah. Um, I want to do something broader that everybody will love and all that other stuff. And then we started going over sports movies that have been made in the last 10 years, right? And it's, there's very few of them. Um, uh, I mean, I, we got it down to, I think, maybe 10 or something like that. And most of them were out of Disney, and they were rated either G or PG. Yeah. Uh, like The Rookie, Miracle on Ice. Um, fuck, I just watched one the other day with John Hamm on a uh, Million Dollar Arm. Uh, was the name of it where, you know, a scout goes over to India and picks off these two kids that are two or three kids that were, were playing cricket and, and uh, tries Costner to make them. Costner did that? Uh, John Hamm did this one. Oh, um, John Hamm. Sorry. Yes. Um, and he goes over there and picks them off. But yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, family friendly and a, it's a, a G movie. Woody Hayes was not a family friendly guy. <laughs> um, he was very aggressive. Okay. And we were trying to go back and forth on ways to get this made and how to approach it and everything. And God, it was a long conversation that I don't know how far we, I don't know how much progress we made in this conversation because it, everybody's worried about everything on both sides that you're trying to examine things that you never would have examined before. And the, the example that I brought up to him last night was Todd Phillips. Um, we're going to go see the Joker movie over the weekend. Yeah. And I was saying, you know, Todd Phillips did this article with Vanity Fair yesterday. Um, and he said, I got out of comedy and I'm finished with comedy because of the social justice warriors and this woke generation. You know, I can't fight 30 million people on Twitter. Therefore me and every other comedic person who actually gives a shit said, we're fucking out. That was the exact quote. We're fucking out of this. Um, and that, and then that's why he's making, you know, the Joker and more yeah. serious movies. Like, um, <clears throat> what was the one with war dogs, uh, Jonah Hill and, yes. uh, mouse teller. Um, and immediately after that article went up, his, pr- his, his point was proven a hundred percent correctly within 20 minutes. Twitter went after him. Your movies suck because you're a fucking white man uh you know this you this male chauvinistic about, world yeah. here's somebody who's you funny deserve. this this trans fu- fucking thing and that this they're funnier than you and all this stuff and it's like look bro todd phillips made old school made the hangovers um made project x like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up about He's been todd doing phillips. it with small budgets and taking pay cuts and Fighting not getting for paid people. himself. Yeah. yeah. Now he made a gajillion dollars off the back end of these movies by taking all these risks and he did the same thing with the Joker. It was a $55 million budget, no CGI, no nothing. And he goes in, in depth of talking about that and, uh, uh, and how everything 
is getting canceled and people are getting canceled. And 20 minutes after that article posted, everybody went after him on Twitter. And I was just like, of Oof. course they did. But guess what? He knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, as soon as I saw it, it was when that happened yesterday. And then I had this conversation last night. I brought up the Todd Phillips thing to this producer. And I said, hey, man, even this like still. And he's like, I know. And he goes, we're all fearful of it and, and worried and trying to get things made. And, uh, you know, it feels like all you can do is make superhero movies and, and shit like that. And I was like, it's really close, man. Um, I just looked up uh, music biopics in the works. Okay. Um, Amy Winehouse. Really? Monumental Pictures. Yeah. Are producing a film on the life That's of the gotta be late... An Huh? That's got to be an R. You'd think. Um, plan to shoot next year. Uh, respect. Aretha Franklin. Mm. Jennifer Hudson. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Mm-hmm. MGM. Shit. Well, she chose. So Aretha Franklin before her chose death. Her? Yeah, Aretha Franklin chose Jennifer Hudson to portray her in smart. the film. Very smart. Bob Marley. His son Ziggy Marley is producing. You know, they've been trying to make that Bob Marley pick forever, though. That's been around that and yeah, that exactly. and that Janis Joplin movie's been around mm-hmm. forever. Boy George. Oh, you know it's funny. I just saw a thing with Boy George, an interview with him. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Look, how would you feel about a straight man playing you? And he goes, It is acting. I want the best actor. He's old school. I don't give a shit about this. Uh Bill Burr, by the way, in his new stand up special has He's a on great... the real but anyway. Is he really? Boy George all the time. Doing what? He, his, one of his, or his manager is married to one of the Beverly Hills. No so way. He, they're always going to his show. He's always on it. He goes, he loves it. I'm That's sure he funny. loves it. Yeah, why not? But what were you going to say? <clears throat> um, I don't know. What, what? You were saying you just saw a thing on him, on Boy George. Oh, on Boy George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an interview. Who was oh. talking about that. And then, look, Bill, Bill Burr just did a, a special on Netflix that just dropped. Yeah. And... It is every bit as aggressive as it's great. It's look him and Chappelle are the two best doing it. I've said this for a very, very long time. Um, Now they're the only two that are just like, Hey man, I literally says in the show, I will probably get canceled after this. And my career is probably done after this, but I don't give a shit. He goes into a bit about when Brian Cranston got attacked for playing this poor guy. He's like, you know, a guy in a wheelchair and he goes, you know, it is fucking acting. You're just saying someone else's words pretending to be there. And but then he went on a big rant about like little Billy that had been Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Planning you know, lived for this role, the guy that's like <laughs> paraplegic and he did go and which I thought was hilarious. But anyways, he goes into more of that. Um there's also another bit that he does in that that's gonna tie into something else. But Yeah, so T B D um Beautiful Carol King, uh, meh. Uh, the MGM is doing a lot of these, but uh, the Power of Love, Celine Dion, is the one that I will be interested to see. Uh, if they go into the fact that she was a child bride and was raised by Renee, we all just yeah. forget that. Let it go. Was it? it I'm trying to remember. Was she 14? Was that it? 14. Okay. He waited. Yeah. Till she, till it was legal. Yeah, of course he did. He didn't want to be fucking Uh, sued, but. Yeah. Well, he waited to marry. He did not wait for anything else. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, raised her, raised his bride. Yeah. 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 Yep. Renee. So did uh, Woody Allen. So. Yeah. So I hope that they, I'm sure they won't because we just. We just don't mention that. Celine, Queen Celine. We she don't keeps... go into the fact that, hey, girl, how was that? How'd you, I mean, is there any residual? No. Nope. Yeah, I, she keeps popping up, man, in the news, which I don't know why. Um, I think she's one of those figures that's probably beloved around the world. Yes, she is. But we just don't give a shit here. <laughs> or it's just like, eh, yeah. The Titanic. That's the only thing I really know her from. Yeah, I know her from annoying me now, but for a while I was able to, she was able to just, you're right, be someone else's problem, Can, Canada yeah. or, 
You know? Yeah, give it to Canada. There were these other people that loved Celine and would see her. And then finally when Renee died, her father husband, um, when he died, yeah. then she was able to like really come out and sing in every interview on the red carpet and wear ridiculous stuff and uh, just really be too much in my face. But the other one is Elvis Presley. What I like about this one is... They cast that already. Baz Luhrmann. Yes, and they, they just cast uh, uh, Elvis Presley. And uh, Yes, I did see that. So this, that, that is actually going through. Like that's uh, shooting and that's going on now. The rest of these are in various stages of development. Yes. And Gucci Mane. Mm. Paramount. He had a book, man, that was, uh, I think, number one. And Imagine Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. it was Brian Grazier who did it, uh, who optioned it and made it into a movie. I think they were looking for the origin of trap music, as wild as that sounds. And okay. I think T.I. said he passed. And then they went to Gucci Mane after that. But uh, that could be cool for sure. Uh, John Lennon, Yoko. They won't really go into it. No. I don't want to see it because they're not really going to go into how much of a fucking piece of shit he was. Him kicking the shit out of her? Yeah. No, just uh, everything. Yeah. His whole life. John Lennon is a piece of shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> As anyone, everyone knows, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Starting from he said very it, early. He said it in interviews where he, he, that he used to kick the shit out of her. So like, That's not the worst thing he's done. No, not so, at all. So, sure, he can say that. Does he want to say anything else that he did? No. because well, he can't. An, did he want to ever? No. Who knows? Who knows with him? I, I don't know what would have happened to him now. You know? Whereas I feel like McCartney now is, is still like, that's what I pictured, you know? Yeah. That's what I pictured where I was like, all right, cool. Uh, the Stones, I didn't picture them playing ever again. Yeah. And they're all together and alive, and you're like, what the fuck? That's yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, so all, all of these movies, by the way, I guarantee you these producers and these writers are going through the same things, thoughts, fears, notes that I went over last night with, uh, with Homeboy. And um, boy, that that's sucks. It sucks. Uh, but Todd Phillips got to make the Joker. $55 million. And he called up Joaquin Phoenix and says, look, Warner Brothers is going to give us $55 million. We get to do whatever we want. I'm amped. Same. So, uh, the, look, the, the numbers are, are coming in from around the world as we speak. And because usually it opens overseas a week before here. Oof, it's already made $155 million in like three days. Good. God bless it, man. Todd Phillips continues to do it. All that hatred he got online, fuck you guys, man. Todd Phillips is awesome. He can handle it, but yeah, I, he, you know he's, what? He's gotten it. You before. know what else he did too? Because um, he's got a production company with Bradley Cooper. Okay. Yes. Stars Born. Yes. That was a fight. Even I wasn't amped did about he... that, and that was the greatest movie of last year, I think. Yeah, I know. We were like, eh. but that was Todd Phillips. God, we talked so much shit about it. Before it, before before it came out. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rightfully so, though. I mean, look, that is an iconic movie that you're like. It was a That's huge a... undertaking, and I just didn't know if he was up to it. Yeah. But he proved me wrong, obviously. Oh, Bra- B. Coops is a uh, rock star, and dude. And then I fell in love with him. Yeah, so they, they teamed up after The Hangover, opened up their own production company, and Bradley Cooper's a producer on The Joker. So funny, Bradley Cooper. Like, I just, I don't know why I haven't ever given him props or ever given him credence i mean he the movies that he's gotten made Mm -hmm. the people that he's championed i mean even being in a production company with todd phillips i mean how fucking smart is that yeah and knowing that you're gonna make small shit and it's gonna be right yes i mean it look if one of those bombs if, if the hangover bombs the rest of it doesn't happen um there probably is no bradley cooper Right. I don't know about Zach Galifianakis. Did he owe him that? But at that time, I don't know. When they got together, I don't know if Bradley Cooper's name was any better than Todd Phillips, right? When they, after The Hangover, if they got got together after Mm -hmm. The Hangover, he had not done American Sniper. He had not done all these things. So, you know, who's helping who in that equation? But it was just a smart... His, like he just continually makes the right moves. Now, besides, as you know, 
That elephant man thing. Well, that's a play. So we'll give him a pass on that. But yeah, but that was a decision. He, he really <laughs> fucked up on that one. He, uh, he lost me on that I one think, for a while. Look, I've been over to that company a few times uh, for meetings. Todd Phillips is a very smart guy, and so is Bradley Cooper. So, I think it's yeah. actually a really good fit for those those guys. It is. I'm just I'm surprised sometimes that I'm I, like. Look, the only thing I'm surprised about I is, sleep on is he's a comedy director. Um, and typically comedies don't look great. So, you know, uh, smart. Both just smart dudes, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this weekend. Again, parents now live here. We can go to a movie. We don't have to call a babysitter and check the phone and do all that stuff. I know. We could even get sushi before and then after get what a glass the- <laughs> of wine. I, know. <laughs> I don't know what I would do with myself. Not but used to that no, at all. Without being like, oh, I got to get home. I know. Or a babysitter texting. like, I got to go to this thing. Or just the, just the text from the babysitter that is, when do you guys think you're going to be back? Yeah. A noise the shite out of me and everyone else it's the because it the cuts co- off your night that's it you're because done then you're thinking like don't first of all don't as soon as someone asks me when you think you're going to be back i'm already done with them yeah so i have a couple really good girls now that know hey man don't don't shoot me don't that ask, text. you don't ask me and you don't shoot me the text yeah don't ask don't tell and they don't let's yeah let's keep it uh on the up and up here they're actually really awesome. Yeah. But right. I've had, like, with Jax in the past, I've had babysitters that are just like, I'm just wondering, because you want to go out and party. Yeah, you want to go out and party. Uh-uh. I get it. You're I in college. I pay way too you much. You go fuck your boyfriend. Sure. And, you know, do a little blow, figure things out. I get it. I babysitters it. are different now. They're getting paid fucking big bucks, dude. Yeah. They're I mean, making they're... money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash yeah. under yeah. the table. Yeah. So don't be texting me the good ones are hard when I'm getting back. Yeah. Uh, we got some sponsors, Jabes. Put this whole shit wagon wow. on the air. I can't believe it. Wow. Can't believe it. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is our first one. Finest mattresses in the land. Look, we we will never have Whole Foods as a sponsor, obviously. But Ghostbed is a gigantic company. Even if we did, they wouldn't give us anything for free. I'm surprised Ghostbed puts up with our bullshit. Um, I agree. Love them. Love them that they do. They're like, I agree. Hey, man. They really have gone through some hardcore ads. That yeah, we they just have. decided was "Damn It, Bob" for Ghostbed. I'm gonna make that song, by the way. So I will shoot. I will record "Damn It, Bob." I don't have time to shoot a music video, but I will record that song. Damn it, Bob! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it, Bob! We'll do that. I will do that techno song, and we'll, well, we'll drop that. My dreams have come true. Then you're welcome. James, for all of the gifts that I give Give you, you. including the ghost bed you sleep on. Uh, 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. No one on the interwebs is doing that. So we talked about this uh, yesterday on Drinking Bros, where somebody hit me up and was like, hey man, it's like 38 bucks a month if you do this pay as you go program. And I was like, oh shit, really? That's awesome. I can't believe it. With no interest. It's wild, right? Um, good, good for a ghost bed. A I, I good was company. Yeah, I was surprised it was that low. I was like, Jesus Christ, because uh, they get go. nothing from doing that. Like they get you to buy it, right? Yeah. But it doesn't. They get no interest. It doesn't help them in no. any way. It helps you. It doesn't really do anything. Um, surprised they offer it to be honest with you. Either way, well, it's easier to stomach, right? To be like, I could pay forty. When you see that big number, right? Yeah. It's hard, although it's completely fucking worth it. And it's a purchase. Go to any rooms to go, any any mattress store. They're going to be that much, if not more. Yeah. But when you see that number, it's like Ooh, by it's easier to be like 40 bucks a month. Yeah. 30 like bucks that. a month. It's great. Uh, love, love, love the ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Best pillows in the business. Best mattress in the business. And uh, their sheets are amazing. Their adjustable base. I need to get. Uh, oh, yes. I am twerking on that. <sighs> twerking on that. Oh, you're twerking on it. Twerking on it. and uh, That would be horrifying. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Javes. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Twerk on it. Picture Ross twerking Ugh, on your bed. Gross. Gross. Disgusting. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shaboinkers. There it is. There it is. No carbs, no sugars. This is going down smooth with all the White Claws. Getting a lot, a lot of messages about White Claw these days. 
I had one at a restaurant the other day. You know I don't do. Don't do the Trulies or the White Claws. Yeah. Had one the other day. That's good. Yeah. People are starting to go. That's not who our sponsor is. But anyways, I do hear you that if you put a little bit of Strike Force, force, it would have bumped it up. It just needs a little more flavor. Just a tiny bit. Yes, yes, yes. White Claws need a little more flavor. And, it's uh, very LaCroix-esque, but yeah. Correct. A little more flavor is all I'm asking for out of those guys. But look, no carbs, no sugars. Obviously, you're not going to get it. Same thing with Strike Force, except they got, oh boy, uh, they got Calm four amazing down, flavors. Dude. Ooh, did I knock it over? Calm uh, down. A lemon, grape, a ridge, and then that other color. Orange. <laughs> Orange, Jabe's knocking over shit today. That other color. I feel alive. The purple one. You're not going to stop me from feeling alive, Jabe's. The purple one, the yellow one, the orange one, and the red one. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. They deliver everywhere in the entire world. They ship everywhere in the entire world. And uh, they get a subscription of the month club. No carbs, no sugars, last longer than five hour energy. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you right, it? Yeah. There it is, James. There it is. Gosh. Woke generation will come after you soon. Soon enough yeah. for that. I'm done. Don't care. Same. Done with all of it. Done. Done with all of it. And uh, if you're a man in this life and you're not using these shaving products, might as well be done with yourself. Might as well be done with your face and body. You got to shave. You got to lotion up. You got to lube everything. You got to you gotta do stuff, James, on the run. Calm down, dude. Can't. I feel good today. I feel real sprightly today. I don't know what's in, inside of my body that makes me feel this great, but it is awesome. Drugs? No, I wish. Yeah. I wish I could get down like that. Right. Um, we, we talked about that Miley Cyrus thing. I wish I could smoke a joint at lunch and just be cool the rest of the day. Can't do I it. I wish, but I think that I think with that stuff, you think you're cool. That's my biggest fear: is that you yeah. would think that you're cool, but to everyone else, you just look like a stone fucking asshole, right? Yeah. So I, my fear is like, oh, maybe I feel like I'm okay, no, but we, how we, am I actually? We have friends presenting. who are who are great on weed, and it's just like, yeah. Congratulations. I know. Uh, it's not, crazy. not good on it. Um, don't know what that has to do with straightrazors.com. But, uh, oh, I thought you already talked about nah, the moving and the revolution oiling 20% and the... off, and uh, you can figure out your life there. Get a, get a kit. Get a kit there and feel great about it. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't do it, man. And this, uh, that, that, that fucking restaurant opened last night in Hollywood. So. I'm sure it was a big turnout. Yeah. Everyone loves a new opening in L.A. Around the block. So we'll, we'll follow up on that story that we were doing it. Um, who is there? Uh, Miley Cyrus? Chris Rock? That's a weird one. Huh. Chris Rock showed up, huh? Uh, DJ Mark Ronson? Obvi. 220-seat cafe. Um, and it was open to the public. Wow, that is a fucking monster line around the block. That's exactly what I said was going to happen. It, no matter what restaurant it was, though. Yeah. Miley Cyrus was opening it. A lot, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of these people in line, you don't want to hang out with in real life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't want to hang out with any of them. If you're that amped to smoke weed in public, um, like that you want to wait in a line in L.A. around the block in the middle of the afternoon, good luck. Good luck. All right, so we got some prices here because people are coming out of here. We got some shots inside of here. Uh, pre-roll joint is starting at eighteen dollars a piece. Is that a lot? I have no. It's gauge. a lot. Is that a lot? It's okay. A lot. It's, uh, so here's what that's like. If you order, you know, a fucking vodka soda out at a bar, again, trying to yeah. watch your girlish figure. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. jack up the price double. Sure. These are LA prices for this shit. So yeah, that, sounds that right. Joint should be about ten bucks. Um. Yeah, people are really going after it. Obviously, there's a lot. There's a lot of clouds of smoke there, James. God. And I'm sure that's going to continue on forever. Like what I th- what I what I didn't nightmare. consider because this is in West Hollywood, right? The weed that'll go outside of the restaurant over into the neighborhoods. Just there's a lot of houses right behind there. Yeah, and it is flower too. <laughs> I know. Well, it's clouds of smoke. Yes, yeah, so if you just sit on your balcony up there in the hills. You can just get a nice contact high for free. 
you know. I'm sure I'm that's kidding. not true, but I don't believe in contact highs. That's not a real thing. Uh, yeah, Sarah it is. Silverman was there. Yes, it is. Well, you're not that far away. You got to be not right, that far away. No, you be right next. But to if person. you're in a car sleeping yeah. on the way to Thanksgiving, yes. Yeah, like you were with your father. Yes. Yeah, we talked about that story, James. Yeah. And that was maybe my favorite story of your entire life. It's my favorite story of my entire life, yeah. but it's possible. It is. It is possible. Not outdoors, I don't think. How old were you again? You definitely. I mean, I was old enough, 20, 18. Okay. Like, I just didn't like, I didn't like smoking weed. It, it was past the point where I did. So I must have been 18 or 19. Because when I was in high school, loved it. Yeah. That would have been a dream come true. Yeah. And then something shifted. Can't handle it. Yep. Too much in my head. Too much shit going on. So I did not want to get high ever. No, you went off the, uh, you went off the, the chooch for a long time. For a yeah, very long I time. Mean, I still basically am off of it. Yeah, to, to a certain point. Um, I, wanna, I hate to interrupt you here. They, they've got a bunch of pictures of everybody in here. Somebody I know is in this fucking picture. You know them as well, and it's exactly who you think it is out in L.A. It's not an actor. It's not a, it's just a friend. Might have saw him on a program doing some other things a few weeks ago. Either way. <laughs> Might have saw him exactly who on a program yep. doing other things a few weeks ago. <laughs> Beard, man bun. Okay. Yeah. No. Of course. Of course he's there. Of course he's there. That's not, the, did you say not an actor? Yeah, not an actor. A friend of mine from, from back in the day. Oh, he may have been, he goes to Burning Man? <laughs> yes, yes. Is he, and he is nope, now you know Burning exactly, Man. exactly, yeah. yeah, who he is. And uh, He went to oh, Burning Man and he never came back. Of course, that there's guy. a picture yep, yep, yep. of him at he this never came back. event. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lives for this. He, oh. You know what is funny, man? He started How many f- scarves was he wearing? 40. 40 scarves. 40 scarves at least. Just around the neck and flowing on the arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go uh, ahead. He's, he was an advocate for this back in the day of trying to open up a restaurant or something like that. So this does not surprise me at all that he's... I bet he was an adve- investor. Probably, right? He's like a Bitcoin. He is a Bitcoin guy. Who knows? I, I think in that world, look, Miley Cyrus has got so much money. Yeah, but she doesn't want to spend all of it on a fucking restaurant. But I wonder she got investors if for you get sure. the property, and that's the difference. Get the property. If you own the real estate. No. They don't own that real estate. Oh. Miley could. She's worth a lot. A lot, Jabes. Yeah, but for That Disney money? Come on, fam. Uh, she's going to lose half of it, though, in this divorce, probably. You know she's got more than Hemsworth. Yes, she does. It's going to be a weird one, a divorce. Yeah, I wonder how that's going to go. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do you have a crime corner for us, Chase? Oh, my gosh, I do. Do you really? I do. Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. Yeah. This one is brought to us by Nitro Cav. Cav. Nitro Cav. Like the back of your leg or Cav? K A V. K O K A V. Okay, so there's no L. Let's detective, see. detective nitro cav. Of course. Cav. Of course, yeah. Cav. 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 Oh, cool. Followed by Bert Kuntz, so he may be a. Ah. He may be somebody. All right. He may be a. Yeah. A detective, though, for sure. Uh, anyway, Florida sex in patrol car arrest. Okay. So a Florida couple that got a DUI uh, was having had sex in the back of the patrol car. Oh, I like that a lot. After their arrest, they were put together. There's a lot of ins and outs. Yeah, I think when there's one car, I don't know why they were. A lot of ins and outs, a lot of questions as usual, not a lot of answers, right? How does two people get arrested for a DUI, which is what I don't understand. So two Florida residents, mm-hmm. blammo, you knew that already. Yeah, I had to have known that. <laughs> um, deputies uh, in county sheriff's office were in the area of South 14th Street and saw a couple of people riding bicycles. One did not have lights, and the other did not have lights in the back. 
I don't know what that means. Why so you have to have lights? So it's a BUI then, a, a biking under the influence. No, you get DUI. No way for bikes. Driving under the influence. Ugh. You can get it on a horse, I think, in some places. Tractor. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's too much. One of the riders uh, had a bicycle with no lights. The other had no lights in the rear. And the deputy said they began riding in the middle of the road, almost hit another car because of the no lights, it ah, says here. <laughs> okay. The no lights thing. Yeah. yeah of course. Of course. Um, so they pulled over Aaron Thomas, 31, and Megan Mon- Mondanaro, there you go. 35. There you go. And the deputy said that he smelt a strong odor. Of an alcoholic drink. Now I could have, we could have both told you that was going to happen, right? Yeah. On a bike, this time of night, in Florida, swerving around the street, sure, riding sure, in the middle sure. of the road, probably drinking a little bit. Eh, maybe a tad. So uh, Thomas told them that Thomas was the guy that got arrested, uh, told the deputy they had been at Hammerhead Bar and Beer. Mm-hmm. Now, now, now we're starting to make sense. Right. You go to hammer According to the repe- arrest report, the pair both had bloodshot, watery eyes, and the speech was slurred. Obviously, the deputy performed a sobriety test. They both failed. Uh-huh. Blah blah blah. Um, the report said that the girl did not speak uh, to the deputy after being asked to take the sobriety test. The two were arrested and placed in the back of a patrol car. Now. While the deputy was outside of the patrol car, they had taken off their clothes and were having sex inside. Were they handcuffed at that point? They must have been, right? Okay. Ah? Or not. You know, you see- I've been in the back of a cop car without- um, Cuffs before? Cuffs. Okay. So, yeah. Look- it's possible. It makes more sense. It'd be hard to get your clothes off when your hands are. Yeah, yeah. Been cuffed a few times, um, and uh, so they had. They must have just gotten put in there just so they could like run, because you're not in a car. Like if they were in a car, they could be like, "Give me a second, I'm gonna run your plate." Blah blah blah. Right. Uh-huh. So if you're on a bike, they probably put them in there to contain them. Again, lots of ins and outs, lots of questions, not a lot of answers as usual. Right? Sure. Um. So they they began to have sex. And the NS- NCSO said that Thomas was removed from the car while naked. So they saw them doing that. He pulls him out naked. Got it. He breaks free, runs through a parking lot, um, out into traffic light, out into traffic. They're chasing him. Great. The dep- deputies eventually caught up with him at a cold stone creamery. Buck naked. He had to get that ice cream. Yeah, you got to right? put that in your in your belly. <laughs> he just ran straight to that Cold Stone Creamery. Your bike and junk. And you're <laughs> having sex and cop <laughs> They cars. were on their way there, obviously. Obviously, the, they were like, let's go get some Cold Stone, right? So they were on their way there. He still had the same mission. Have sex real quick, but he had the same mission in his mind. They were obviously blacked out. People love Cold Stone, dude. It is great. <laughs> they sing a song to you. It's like... He, you know, you get to create your own flavors, and they make it right in front of you. It's really great, and I understand why he went. As a guy, though, going into Cold Stone Creamery no, nude. No, outside. He didn't go inside. Oh, he didn't go inside. No, but. Because if he went in, because <laughs> no. when that cold air hits you from the creamery. He just started pretending to work, like hiding. Well, no, I'm thinking about his package. Like, if yeah. you're buck naked, that's going to shrink up real fast. For so sure. I'm sure do, he as wasn't. A, as a, a grown adult nude male, mm. you definitely do not want to go into an ice cream parlor. Right. Um, with that sitch going on, because that's going to shrink everything I up. I mean, I think at that point you're not really worried. But, yeah, I hear you. And I do hear you. Um, so he was taken to the detention center after he was medically cleared and faces charges of exposing sex organs. Okay. I, I, look, I can only name one organ unless he had multiple dicks. I just think dicks. it's a funny way to put it of like indecent exposure, yeah. you know? Indecent. Char- indecent. Exposure. Exposure. Um, clear. So they, yeah. So he just faces charges of exposing sex organs. DUI and threat against a public officer. Huh. Um, you don't say. Mondanaro became violent and started kicking one of the deputy, deputies several times. This is a bad night. This keeps going, huh? This is just a bad night for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For these two. Yeah. 
uh, and then Thomas was initially re- removed from the patrol car. She is facing charges of exposing sex organs, ah. DUI, resist with violence, simple violence, simple assault, and unnatural and lascivious act. I'd like to also point out that Megan has a uh, tattoo on her arm that says Miss Thirsty. Ah, look at that. So she look might be a lawyer. I'd watch out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, um, you know. Miss Thirsty. My Miss God. Miss Thirsty, a little star over the eye. Ooh, that's that's fun and flirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you oh, know what you're getting thirsty. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's right here, so it's visible. Yep. You're definitely having sex in the back of a cop car with that tattoo. For sure. Good for Thomas, though. Yeah. Like, way to Got go. Got her to do that. The whole thing. All of it. Because that's a story for, that you have for the rest of your life. You mm-hmm. know, There's a lot of bucket list things that a lot of us aren't able to accomplish. Right. And everyone's just going to be like, did you get the cold stone or what? Did like, you get the cold couldn't stone? Couldn't get it. Did that's you... like going to be the pinnacle of the story, right? Yeah. And it'll be like, so, but what about the cold <laughs> stone? Yeah. <laughs> Sex in the back of a cop car, though. Nah, nah, nah. Did you get the Cold Stone Creamery, though, yeah. bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get cake batter? Oof. Cake it's batter, a, ice it's cream. The best, it's the best at Cold Stone. Adding yeah. stuff into I'm with that. You. Yeah, yeah. And it's cold because they have it on a Cold Stone. They make it <laughs> so it doesn't melt. <laughs> A big fan of that crime corner. Who is it? Nitro Cav? Yeah. Gave? Thanks, bud. Thanks. Thanks for the submission. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that one. Thanks for your hard work. Yeah. Um, fuck. Fuck, man. Fuck. I wonder what the guy, I, I wonder, I wonder if there is cops, out, there's got to be cops out there who just let it gone down like people fucking in the back of a car where you're just like, yeah, all right, cool. I mean, I think at that point, you don't want to at that point. Are you videotaped you really in the back of the car? Yeah. You are. Okay. Yeah. So you probably had to then because it was like, hey, man, yeah. why'd you let these people bone for a half hour in the back of your car? Exactly. Probably getting some some trouble for that. Sure. Shit. Uh, speaking of getting in trouble with the cops, um, that woman, by the way, who uh, went to the wrong house, wrong apartment. Uh-huh. What happened with her? Guilty. Yeah. Um, so she's facing life in prison. I was, I was wondering in that case, it was so bizarre. I don't know the real, nobody will ever know the real shit of it, obviously, but um, that, was a, that was a weird one. I think if she wasn't a cop, right, it'd be different? I don't know. I, w- I think what, if she was just a normal person, came home drunk, went into the wrong house, maybe? I don't know. Either I don't way, know. You it's, can't, just, uh, it's just very weird, and I think she um, should not have gone on the stand. I'm not sure. I, I, when I saw her testimony, it looked like she felt horrible about it and actually wanted to testify. So I don't know. I, I look, yeah. we'll probably never get the real answers on that, but uh, strange case that, that just popped up. Um, so for those that don't know, it's yes, case of, um, I don't know what the lady's name or where, where it was. Do you know? I think Texas. I want to say Texas. Maybe. Uh, I think so. But anyway, she was off duty. She's a police officer, but she was off duty. Mm-hmm. She came home one night, went into the wrong apartment. And the guy that was and shot the guy that was in there, the black guy. Yes. She said that she told him to show his hands. Show. Show. Did, yeah. Yeah. Why she had her gun on her. I don't know. Uh, There's the, a lot of questions. It's it's um could it and again, if you would have told me that she was wasted, I would have been like, okay. It's one of those apartments that every floor looks the same. It's right. all, you know, you get off on the wrong floor and you could be walking to which I've done before. Yeah. Hotel whatever, right? And you're like this is the wrong floor. So if you'd have told me that that she was wasted, I'd be like maybe, but she's telling keeps telling him to show show her his hands show me your hands show me your hands and yeah. he he was just sitting on the couch so he's like what what the fuck she's not a police officer he's confused well she's not takes, in, a, in a she's in not uniform. Yeah. in uniform yeah and someone has just walked into his house it's a weird tragic story but but uh, if it's her, if in her mind she thought it was her apartment and that's why i think she wanted to testify to be honest with you where she was just felt bad about it and yeah, but I have to know was she wasted? 
because that's know. not a sober situation. Because um, you would those... look around and be like, oh my God, this is not my apartment, <laughs> not my furniture, yeah. not my place. Yeah. I, to me, it would be hard to imagine that she was sober and then just doing that. But Right. So why isn't that part of it, I guess? They're trying to like take that out of the the equation. They're not mentioning that at all. So I just go like, what was her blood alcohol? Like, what is she? What is happening? Yeah, it's the um, only explanation. So they're they're gonna send it. So they haven't given her how many years yet? Um, obviously, but they're guilty of what manslaughter? Yeah, oh. she faces life in prison. So, but they For don't know. Everybody's speculating. Yeah, guilty of murder, and. Uh, they're debating now of, of what this sentence should and will be. Um, but, uh, that, man, that was a strange case, and I didn't know which way that was going to shake out, but it just went down. So we'll see. They're still deliberating right now on the Senate. They'll appeal a million times, but... Uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I just don't understand. I really don't understand know, how that happens. Story. Again, unless you are wasted. That will come out in like some are. documentary later where... Yeah. Or a podcast that, that you'll have the answers for it then. Somebody knows something more, but I don't know. Um, yeah, Dallas is, is where that happened. Uh, we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day, though, James. Shall we? We shall. Um, man, I, it is, this is a hard one for me. But uh, this guy will go down in history. It is uh, Gavin Newsom, governor of uh, California. Okay. So... This has been a huge topic, uh, a hot button topic for years about whether or not student athletes should be paid by the NCAA. Um, and the athletes have always said yes. The school boards and everyone else has always said no. The NCAA has always said no. California became the first one to pass this bill um, saying that yes, NCAA athletes should be paid. So in the state of California, if you're going to play there, UCLA, USC, any state school, you will be paid by the NCAA. This is the first state to do it. I don't know what's going to happen because you, either you got to get everybody else on board across the nation or your schools can't play any teams in California, any schools in California. Hmm. So LeBron and those guys just came out and were like, this is amazing and this is the way it should be. Right. Um, I, the only experience that I can speak from is having gone through the recruiting process, right? And seeing what that day-to-day -day life is like. You don't really have a life. Um, I'm not sure if you come from a family that doesn't have some money, you can't get a job. You, you, that's just, you don't have time for that because um, the, the university's got you going as a student athlete the whole fucking day. I mean, you're exhausted. And uh, I don't know what the right answer is because they're, look, they're using these kids' likenesses and video games and shit mm -hmm. that are massive. A few years back, Ed O'Bannon um, from uh, UCLA was, was the one to sue and it, it went all the way to the Supreme Court of like, hey man, you're using my likeness of me in a college basketball game and I'm not getting paid for it. Yeah. Like, this is bullshit and yeah. you won. So now California is the first state to drop and be like, hey man, we, we want to pay these athletes and give them some money so they're not, you know, hiring illegal agents or doing backwoods deals with, with people for shit because yeah. that's going on for years and years and exactly. years. Uh, you know, I, I understand the other side of it where it's like you are getting a free education, you're getting a scholarship to college, and you're getting a free degree. That is a value of, depending on what school you go to, could be $150,000. So I understand that element as well. Um, but, you know, if you want to take a date out or something and you're a kid and you come in and have a scholarship, they don't give you a per diem of like, hey, man, here's 100 bucks. Go, go take your girlfriend out to dinner or go to a movie. Or They don't do that. Right. So if you don't come from some form of money, mm -hmm. you're there. You're at the cafeteria. And right. I, look, I had friends at Ohio State who were, who were on that plan. And you're at the cafeteria every day and you can't go out and do anything. Um, and it's, it's weird. Um, now... It's going to force everybody into deciding what they want to do starting next year and uh, whether or not California plays on its own or everybody else follows suit. So we'll see. Either way, somebody took the initiative, and I can't believe it. Wow.
It's uh, that is a ballsy move here because this is either going to change the game or ruin these athletes. Or if you're if you're a student athlete, shit. If you're looking to get a scholarship from any school in California versus anywhere else in America, and you say, "Hey, man, they're going to pay me, and I can get a little cash from this," like it's a huge recruiting tool. Mm. So we'll see if this holds up and, and everything. I'm, I'm super curious about it, but uh, it actually went down. This has been years and years and years of debate. Oh yeah. So. Uh, Gavin Newsom will be recognized for that. The rest of his shit, though, is completely ridiculous. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, pooping in the streets and needles and safe spaces and all that stuff. Sure, but, uh, sure, this sure, one, sure, sure. Eh. This one, <clears throat> we'll blammo. See, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Jabes, um, look, I'm going to crank it on 14 today in honor of you after this show. Yeah? 14, what is it, 14, 40 minutes? 14 for 40 minutes at at least a 3 or 3.5. Okay, and what what is that? A stair stepper, treadmill. You're doing this on a treadmill at 14. Yeah, bro. What'd you think? I thought it was like a fucking one of those stair climbers. No, 14. Mm-hmm. That's aggressive, James. How? What are you just walking directly up into the sky? Yeah. At that point? No, you'll see. All right. I need pictures. I'll I'll give it a It'll go. It'll be at a 14. 14. And then you do intervals. So try and try and be at a three or three five for at least three minutes. And okay. then you can drop down to two five. And then you kind of do intervals in that way. Oof, I did't even know it went to 14. I, look, 10 <laughs> I is the highest I've 15. ever been. 10 is the highest I've ever been 15 on. 15 is the highest. Shit. That it goes. I, I feel like you at the gym would be above everyone else because you're so <laughs> high in the sky that like, man. It's not. Who the fuck it's is that? It's not, dude. What's that lady doing? Ah, she's got it on a 14. No bigs. <laughs> no bigs. I hope they don't call me a lady. What do you think? Girl? Girl? Yeah. You Woman. think you're still a girl? No, but I hate la- lady, lady sounds like 50. Okay. Woman? You like woman? Woman. All right. Oh, man, that woman's, woman's like... A, I'm What's 17. that woman doing? Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a buddy of mine, uh, Chris, who you know. It was mm-hmm. talk, we were talking about colleges the other day. And he goes, "Man, you go to these college games." He's like, "Man, I feel if, if I just shaved off my gray beard, like I could fit right back in with the college." And I was like, "No, no, you couldn't. You're not, n- no, like that is." But you think you could? No, I think I could pass as like a good, like, hey man, uh, are you in medical school? Like your last year of medical school, maybe. You know, like, are mm-hmm. you, are you towards the end of medical school? Um, maybe that, right? But we talked about this at length on, on, uh, on a group text. The kids now, it's a, it's a whole different story. So I, I, you, I, you, it's unfair to grade it like that anymore. Sure. They all look 14. Mm-hmm. They're all good screens. Mm-hmm. They don't yeah, see the sun. Yeah, we talked about this on the last show. Uh, we, on the last show we did? Yeah. So that, that's what it is. But he thought... He thought, yeah. And I was like, nah, nah. He's dude. in great shape. He is, but he's a man. You're, sure. You're a, you're a woman. Right. You know? And, uh, and that's what it is. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go with woman. That's what, no, no lady. I mean, I'm not delusional like you. I know how old I am. James, look at me. This is baby fresh. Mm-hmm. Baby fresh. It's a straight razor shave, is what that is. Yeah. No, no, no. I yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think maybe but the term girl is used differently than boy. Like wouldn't call you a boy, but you, sometimes people use girl as just the gender. Yeah, you're right. They don't, you know, but then lady, it's just not usually what people say. You ever gotten a ma'am around here? Yeah. And I'm not the one I hate when people are like, oh God, don't. Yeah. Don't you dare call me ma'am. I think it's like a, it's a respect thing. And then the person was like, sorry, I'm, you know, I was raised to of course. call all women. Ma'am it's and not sir. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't mind that either. Oh, <laughs> please. Not when, yet. When I hear sir, um, I pretend that I've, I've received some form of knighthood. Yeah. And you make them bow to you after. Correct. You're like, if you're going to call me sir. Obviously, let's, let's really present yourself yeah. to me <laughs> you as a sir. Don't present yourself to me. <laughs> present yourself to me. <laughs> calm down. Calm um, down. Take a little. You really need to calm no, down this episode. Bend it's, the knee. Yeah. Bend the knee and, uh, and go down. It's really and, been a 
just a, a <laughs> roller coaster with you. <laughs> I'm on one today. I feel great. I feel like a 14, Jabes. A 14 out of picture f- at 40. 14 40 out minutes. of 15. Yeah. yeah. 14 out of 15. 14 out of 15. <laughs> Man, numbers. Sounds too close to, to Jesus. Sure, uh, sure. Sounds You'll like, see. It's no big deal. Yeah, it sounds like you're throwing on Kanye's Touch the Sky because you're against, you're probably scraping your forehead on the ceiling at that point. It's a big boy. It's a big boy move, James. Proud of you. Proud of this episode. Proud of everything we do. Week in and week out. We're here seven days a week between both shows. Subscribe on YouTube. We're trying to make the YouTube a thing, by the way. Um, slowly but surely. Yeah. So we only get maybe a thousand thousand or so views on uh, on the used Look. tubes we know that it's the future therefore that's that's why we're doing it um but the audio show just dominates doesn't it i mean so it's easier for people to listen than to watch but they get around to it, it it's when it, you they know what, can. You know what podcast is it's it's commutes for people yes um so it's monday through friday drive and uh, yes. uh we do the reason why we do seven a week is that way people are working on the weekends we get a lot of people who work on the weekends and they're like yo or at least nobody puts Sunday podcasts or, out on yeah. the weekend we're like hey we'll do it yeah, we'll do it uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, a.k.a. 14, 14 out of 15. Lady, lady, AKA lady. Uh, I am Ross Patterson. This is the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>